today on prime time. We are going to roast a whole lamb, but we're not gonna do it whole. We're gonna do it what we consider a better way. The butcher way. The butcher way. Yeah. Whole animal barbecue is awesome, but it takes a lot of time and know-how to do it right. And you're like, oh, I'm just gonna slow cook the whole thing and it's all gonna melt apart and fall apart and be delicious. That's not always true. It doesn't end up turning out like that because they are different muscles and they're cooking completely differently. So what we wanna do is do a whole animal barbecue over an open fire, but separating the whole animal out so we are really getting the best of each cut. We wanna do this with a lamb because the muscle structure is the same for pork as it is for beef. You have your leg, you have your loin, you have your rib and rack, and you have your shoulder. We're gonna break these down, talk about the best way to cook them and why. Our breastplate just needs to be separated. Only use the saw when you're going through bone. Traditionally where we like to break the shoulder is between the fifth and sixth ribs starting from the neck. You get the very end of the breastplate. It's a different muscle structure and it's the very end of the shoulder blade as well. So it's a natural seam. So now we have our two shoulders. Next up, separate the belly. It cooks completely different than the actual loin. This white line here is the end of the shoulder blade. Anything past that is gonna be a little more chewy. We're gonna grill it, we're gonna get a couple different textures out of it. How long do we want our rib chops to be? I like a little bit of belly on there, a little bit of fattiness. Everything we're pulling off is gonna be our belly. We're just going to separate the legs. Two legs, two shoulders. Let's tackle this uh, rib and loin. Just to understand the anatomy is the same, the same, the same across lamb, pork, beef. This is where you would get your bone-in pork chops, your bone-in rib chops, your ribeye steaks. This is the tenderloin. And on the other side of the tenderloin is what we just call the loin. But if you cut it into chops, that would be your New York strip or your porterhouse steak. These are our prized cuts. Doesn't matter the animal. These are what tend to go for a premium because they're so tender. Where that last rib is, caught on the other side of it, we now have our loin chops and our rib chops. Makes, a lot, of, makes a lot of sense, huh? You know you don't have to hold it if I'm holding it, right? Or are we just holding hands right now? Would it be quite as fun if we weren't both holding it? Extremely undervalued cut of meat is the loin. This is priced at half of what this is. With this lamb, it came in at 60 pounds. About 50% of any animal is going to be bone. You can conservatively say that this is gonna feed about 45 to 50 people. We're gonna go start a fire, and then we're gonna start cooking. As you can see, Brent got a fire going. Way to go, Brent. We're ready to go. Let's throw some lamb shoulders on there. Those are the first things we need to get going. We're trying to reach an internal temperature of at least 190 degrees. That's the temperature at which meat starts pulling off of the bone really easily. We seasoned it last night, so it has about, about 12 hours worth of uh, salting on it. All that's really doing is allowing the salt to get in further. We're just getting smoke on the outside, but we're hanging it as low as possible so it can get as much heat as possible. This will probably take about six hours to get cooked all the way through to the point of uh, being able to pull. All this meat down here, which is what we really, really want, is gonna be super tender and very juicy by the end of this. If we were cooking this as a whole animal, the legs would definitely cook to at least medium or medium well while you're trying to get the shoulders cooked all the way through so they are of a good consistency. Leg of lambs, in my opinion, best rare. This is our whole point of breaking the whole thing down is so that we can take our time and still serve this the way that we want to. It's only been about 15 minutes. Yeah. We're gonna flip it so now we can start rendering out this fatty side. And that's all we're gonna do all day. Just flip them. Spin them around. We're not cooking directly over the hard burning wood. Coals will keep falling. 
We'll keep pulling them out so that the meat hanging over top it will cook a little bit more evenly. You're not only paying attention to the meat, you're paying attention to the heat, where it's coming from. Off this backside, we have a little bit of a skirt here, so that's gonna radiate some heat, so the one on the back is gonna cook a little bit faster than the one on the front. Everything matters. This is a big open fire. My leg is burning right now. You chose shorts. I... Dad vibes. This is the loin. This is what we call the saddle, the lamb saddle. Once it's deboned, you have a large part of the spine so you can pretend like you're in Mortal Kombat. Yeah! yeah! These are our two New York strips. These are our tenderloins. This is a little bit of sirloin. We're just gonna roll, tie the whole thing. With lamb fat, like a lot of that flavor comes from the fat and you wanna let that render itself. We'll let this slowly roast over the open fire. A Little bit of indirect smoke. We kind of get it up to about 100 degrees. We're about three hours, so first hour, second hour, third hour. This is our rare section, rare to medium rare. The mussels themselves are already pretty tender, yeah. so we're really just slowly, slowly cooking them through, letting the fat render. Ben? Yes? We look cool, right? We look really cool. The wind's starting to pick up in the backyard. We're three hours in, so that means we kind of have to be nimble with how we're doing this. So we're just gonna keep these fires burning a little bit brighter than we normally would and keep them a little bit closer to the meat than we normally would. Open fire cooking is more about the feel. There's a ton of different things that are gonna change. You're in it for the day, it's a process. This is, to me, like getting to know meat and what you're cooking with on a much deeper level. In South America, people have this in their home. Like yeah. Brazilian, Argentinian, like cook whole animals like every single Sunday. And like that is an amazing tradition. Learn how to cook different muscles different ways. It's just so much more engaging than just, you know, throwing something on the grill. And it's snack time. We deserve a rack of lamb snack. We can have little snacks. Ooh. It kind of makes it an all day affair, which is for your guests to be able to like come by and be like, oh, the ribs will be up in 15 minutes. 45 minutes after that, we'll have the loin roast. Then two hours after that, we'll have the pulled lamb snack all day. If you would like to know what uh, butchers do for therapy. La, 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 la. That sizzle that we're hearing, like as soon as we drop it, that's a good thing. Brent's doing a good job. So these took, what, eight minutes? Um, you're just trying to render out a little bit of that belly fat. Really yes, annoyed can with we me. please okay. just eat this? I'm gonna shut up, let's do this. Holy oh, that's so good. Best thing ever, so we kept a large part of the belly on. It's nice and tender, super fatty. This will keep us going for another couple hours. Yeah, I think so. That is very, <laughs> so very good. good. This is our loin. We debone the whole thing so that it would be able to be served as a roast. Hopefully it's just a nice medium rare all the way through. I've never seen Brent be so tender with anything before. Woohoo! I'm very happy with this. Your loin piece is here. Your tenderloin there, some belly meat right here, all wrapped in fat. You know, this is more medium than medium rare. I'm glad that we actually cooked it a little bit more for the amount of fat that's on it. All of that rendered out, super tender, nice texture. This is, this is awesome. Let's try a leg of lamb. It didn't take more than what, two and a half hours? Yeah. Take out your femur bone, this little kneecap here, cut around that. Super excited how evenly it really cooked through. Hell oh, yeah. It tastes like roast beef. Mm-hmm. That's fantastic. For anyone that's ever had a complaint about yeah. eating lamb, this is the steakiest lamb yeah. I've ever had. Just wonderful wonderful texture. That is so good. This on its own is the one of the best freaking legs of lamb I've ever had. That is a beautiful shoulder. Every piece is pulling back. Yeah. 
exactly what you're looking for. Because you have a lot of fat on the outside, a lot of intermuscular fat, it's really just best all mixed together like it's pulled pork. You really want to still have a texture to it. Yes, 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 yes. Oh man, this is the best part to me. This is, this is the one. This is the one. Tons of fat, lots of different textures. It's cooked the longest, so it's got the most smoke to it. Just so much flavor. You don't want to just do everything one way. You're just taking away some of the attributes of some of the other pieces. Get to know these muscles better, and you're gonna get so much more out of them. Four different textures, four different types of cooking, all of them excellent, all of them totally different, yeah. but so freaking delicious. That's how you do a whole animal barbecue butcher style.